Welcome! In this video we're going to be talking about pH calculations with conjugate acid-base pairs. So we're going to take a look at a problem like this one down here in problem number three where we're asked to find the pH of a solution of potassium cyanide. And what you want to do when you see a problem like this you want to recognize that you are actually dealing with an ionic compound. So when you're trying to figure out what this compound is doing in solution you want to keep in mind that it actually is going to ionize. So we have 0.35 molar KCN. What we really have is 0.35 molar potassium ions and we have 0.35 molar cyanide ions. And you want to look at those ions separately and ask yourself is one of these going to be an acid or a base? Potassium is not a good hydrogen giver. It doesn't have any hydrogens to give. It's not a good hydrogen taker because it's already positive so it doesn't want any other positive things to stick to it. So uh, potassium is going to end up being neutral. And I'm going to cross that off because your neutral ions are basically just spectators. They are not doing anything. They're not giving or taking a hydrogen. So that leaves our CN minus as a possible acid or base. So you want to ask yourself, is it a good hydrogen giver? Well, it doesn't have any hydrogens to give, so it's not going to do that. Is it a good hydrogen taker? Sure, it's a negative ion. Negative ion are always good candidates for being hydrogen takers because they like those positive hydrogen ions. So I'm going to look at um, CN minus as being a possible base. And a way to figure out whether CN minus is a good base or not is to look at what its conjugate acid is. So I'm going to add a hydrogen and say, okay, the conjugate acid of CN minus is HCN. And I'm going to think about my list of seven common strong acids. If HCN is not one of those strong acids, that means it is a weak acid. And the conjugate of a weak acid is a weak base. So there we go. We have just figured out that CN minus must be a weak base. And then, so I'm going to write out the reaction then. So CN minus is a weak base. That means that when you put it in water, it is going to be a hydrogen taker. It is going to make HCN and it is going to make hydroxide ions. And if I'm trying to figure out how many hydroxide ions, I can set up a nice chart like I always can for any equilibrium problem. I'm going to ignore water because I leave out pure liquids and solids from my K expressions. And my CN minus concentration is 0.35 molar. I start out with no product. Some of my CN minus though is going to react with water and form product. So this is what my ice chart is going to look like. And then I can write a K expression for this reaction. It is going to be products over reactants. So here's my products and here's my reactants. And I can plug my values into my K expression. So that's X squared over 0.35 minus X. And now all I need is a K value in order to solve for this, for X here. And I'm given a K value, but wait, I gotta be careful. I am given a Ka value for HCN. So I'm not actually being given a Ka for K value for this reaction right here. What I'm being given is a K value for this reaction. So the Ka for HCN describes this reaction right here. Um, so I can't use the Ka for this reaction because this is actually the, a different reaction. This is a base reaction. But since CN minus and HCN are a conjugate acid base pair, I can use this relationship that Ka times Kb equals Kw. So I can figure out what the Kb is of this reaction by rearranging this equation and saying Kb is Kw divided by Ka. So Kw is 4 times 10 to the negative 10th. Ka is, whoops, I put the wrong thing in there. Kw is 1 times 10 to the negative 14. Um, Ka is 4 times 10 to the negative 10th. So if I plug that in and solve, I'm going to get 2.5 times 10 to the negative 5th as my Kb value. So this reaction right here, Cn minus acting as a base, has a Kb value of 2.5 times 10 to the negative 5th. And so here's my equation right now. I'm gonna rearrange that and solve for x. And I end up with an x value of 3.0 times 10 negative third when I round it to two sig figs. I wanna keep in mind that in this reaction, x represents my hydroxide concentration. So if I take the negative log of x, that is the negative log of OH, that is actually the pOH. And the pOH ends up being 2.53. And to find the pH, I'm going to use my relationship that pH plus pOH is 14. And all of these equations are on your equation sheet. Don't worry about having to memorize any of them. 
I should end up with my pH being 11.47. So if we look at one more, we've got a solution here of sodium nitrite. Again, it is an ionic compound, so really what I have is 0.5 molar sodium ions, and I've got 0.5 molar um, nitrite ions. Sodium is gonna be neutral for the same reasons that we said potassium is neutral up there. We should notice all our alkali metal ions are gonna be neutral. They're gonna be spectators in, in most reactions. So that leaves our NO2 looking like our weak base. And I'm gonna confirm that it's actually weak base by looking at the conjugate acid. So the conjugate acid of NO2 is HNO2. And that looks temptingly similar to one of my strong acids. Um, but it's not, it's actually a weak acid. So HNO2 is a weak acid. Um, HNO3 is a strong acid. So make sure you're careful with your formulas here. HNO2 is a weak acid though. So NO2 is a weak base. So what that means is NO2, when you put it in water, it's gonna take hydrogens from water forming HNO2 and hydroxide. That's what makes it a base because it forms hydroxide when you put it in water. You're gonna set up your ice chart. I know that this has an initial molarity of 0.5, and I'm gonna use up some of that reactant, make some product, and I end up with this. We should see a pattern here that all these um, you know, acid or base reactions look kind of similar. I've got two products over one reactant. So my K value is HNO2 over OH divided by NO2. And this we will call a KB because this NO2 is behaving like a base. So we call this a KB expression. And I just need a value for K here. Um, I am not given the value for KB. What I am given is the value for KA for the conjugate acid. So I can use this relationship that KA times KB equals KW. And I can solve for the KB value for this base right here. So KB is going to be KW divided by KA. That's 1 times 10 to negative 14 divided by 4.5 times 10 to negative fourth. I end up with 2.2 times 10 to negative eleventh is my KB value. So if I plug it in, I have x times x, so x squared over 0.5 minus x equals 2.2 times 10 to the negative eleventh. Rearrange and solve for x. I get x equals 3.3 um, times 10 to negative six. And if I take the log of that, that's gonna give me the pOH, which is 5.48. And the pH is 14 minus the pOH, so that is going to be 8.52. And sorry if that got kind of messy there. One other thing I wanna point out is if you're looking at these, these two acids and two bases, um, notice that the stronger acid of these two, if you're looking at HCN and HNO2, HNO2 is the stronger acid. It's got a larger Ka value. And its conjugate, NO2 minus, is the weaker base. So you notice how it's got a smaller Kb value, 10 to the minus 11, versus up here it was 10 to the negative fifth. And if you look at the pH of these solutions, they're pretty similar molarities. Um, but the bottom solution has a pH of only 8.5, whereas the top solution has a pH of 11.5. So the top solution is much more basic than the bottom solution. That's because the top solution, CN minus, it's the conjugate of a weaker acid. So that means um, CN minus is a stronger um, base than NO2 minus. And that's because HCN is a weaker acid than HNO2. So the weaker the acid, the stronger the conjugate base, and vice versa. That's a relationship we can use for five. We're looking at these dissociation rings. Notice that this top one has the largest Ka value. So that's HSO4. Um, that means that one is the strongest acid of the four. And the strongest acid is going to have the weakest conjugate base. The one, this third one down, NH4, this has the smallest Ka, meaning it is the weakest acid, so this one is going to have the strongest conjugate base. So if I'm looking over here on this side, NH3 is going to be the strongest conjugate base, 
um, SO42 minus is going to be the weakest conjugate base out of all these possibilities. So that's another way to kind of apply this relationship right here. And here's another example here in problem number six. You're given Ka values for two acids. I'm write them underneath here. So HOI is two times 10 to negative 11. That seems pretty weak. Um, lactic acid is 1.38 times 10 to the negative fourth. So it looks like lactic acid has the higher Ka value. So it is going to be the stronger acid. And since we're comparing solutions of the same concentration, that means this one is going to have a lower pH because it will have generated uh, more H plus ions. It is important to note that the pH depends on both molarity and K value. So we can make this comparison here because these solutions have the same molarity. So the looking down at problem part B, we're now looking at two ionic compounds. So whenever we're looking at ionic compound, think about what the individual ions are. So this first solution is made of sodium ions and OI minus ions. The second one is made of sodium ions and C3H5O3 minus ions. And whenever you have ions, keep an eye out for conjugate acids or bases. So it looks like right here, this is the conjugate base of HOI. And then this ion right here is the conjugate base of lactic acid. And we can recognize conjugate acids or bases because they differ by only one hydrogens in their chemical formulas. So since the question is which solution would be more basic, the one with the weaker conjugate acid will have the stronger conjugate base. So this solution is going to be the most basic because HOI is a weaker acid than lactic acid. Therefore, its conjugate base, conjugate base, um, OI minus will be the stronger base as opposed to um, lactic acid over there. And if you want, you could do a calculation. So you could calculate the KB for both of those by taking the KW divided by KA, and that would give you KB values for both of them. And if you do that, you should find that the KB value for OI minus is going to be larger than the um, KB value for, for this guy, for our lactic acid one. Um, and that makes sense because over here you'd be dividing by a smaller number, so I'll give you a larger value. Over here you're dividing by a bigger number. So there's a couple of ways to use that relationship there. All right, thanks for listening.